Walsh here in Hiroshima. Today we are going to the stunning garbage facility. So this is one of the garbage trucks. We're gonna see a model of inside, but I thought it's really fun that we can see one in the parking lot before we go in. Design. The architect uh, called it the Museum of Garbage. It's funny that garbage is something we all produce, but it seems like we think about it so little. It's worth thinking about because it's one of our big users of energy and uh, creators of pollution if it's not processed well. And this was a big project for Hiroshima City. Sorry, there's a bit of wind now. I hope you can still hear okay. So they wanted to create something as a part of the Hiroshima 100 year since 1945, uh, part of peace city planning as part of the Hiroshima narrative. So they built this facility right on the peace line. So if you go straight from the A-bomb dome in Peace Park, the museum in Peace Park, straight line down to the sea, you would be here at the garbage facility. So this is all quite a new facility. 360 view here. And what good weather today. Beautiful weather. So the designer's name is Yoshio Taniguchi. And Yoshio Taniguchi trained under Kenzo Tange. Kenzo Tange is the designer of the Peace Park the Hiroshima Peace Memorial Park. And so he follows the same minimalist modernism, straight lines, straight clean lines design that you see in a lot of the architects in that modernism and minimalism design. I don't know, recycling rates are really high but there is a lot of plastic use and more than 70% of all the plastic is burnt here at the incineration plant along with any paper or kitchen waste. And they do 400 tons for 1.1 million people. Um, but this incineration has been uh, studied compared to straight landfill and it creates energy as the garbage burns. So it's considered more environmentally friendly than landfill. But the ash that's produced because they're burning plastics with other materials is toxic. So the ash has to go to landfill. Uh, this is the out, outside bit of the hallway in the design. So because it's along the peace line, you'll see as we go inside that the whole facility is broken into two parts to maintain that unbroken line from the Peace Memorial Park all the way down here to the sea to not be a barrier between the urban and nature areas, but to be like an open hallway, con uh, continue that peace line. Um, so Japan's main energy sources are still uh, fossil fuel based. Uh, solar, wind, renewable energy is less than 20%, much less. Uh, they're aiming to increase to 20% by 2030. Let's hope they can do that. Um, but at the moment, it's mostly coal and fossil fuel powered. But they say that once the ignition is started, um, the garbage can be burned very efficiently. And it's amazing. You do not smell any garbage here at all. And you don't hear any noisy operations. So this is a real state-of-the-art facility here. You can see the design here, this hallway that if you went straight from here, you would go straight through Peace Memorial Park 
the museum, the atomic bomb dome. Before we walk through the museum part, just show through the window here. This is where the garbage trucks go up into the facility. And this facility was designed by Yoshio Taniguchi, who designed the MoMA Art Museum in New York City. And he has also designed a lot of museums around Japan. Look at those clean, beautiful lines. Following in the footsteps of designers that we see in Hiroshima, like Kenzo Tange, he studied with. He also worked with an American designer, landscape designer. Uh, you might have heard of Peter Walker. He's worked on projects around the world and based in Tokyo. So this, we're walking into the museum part of the facility where they try to add transparency and education as well as beauty in design to how we deal with garbage. It is nicknamed the Echo Rium. Echo is used a lot in Japan for anything that's supposed to be more environmentally friendly. So on the left here, uh, when we started the tour, we saw one of these garbage trucks parked here. And here we can see the cross section of what the garbage truck looks like inside and how it works. Uh, you can see the company that makes the garbage truck is our local automobile company, International Car Company Mazda. If you come to Hiroshima City, you can also visit the Mazda Museum and go on a tour around their facilities to see how they make their cars. So you can see how compact the garbage truck is. It collects the garbage in this end compartment and smashes it and then pushes it up into the main hold. And twice a week, when it's burnable garbage day, you will see these trucks going around. Uh, going around, yeah, all of Japan, but going around all the neighborhoods in Hiroshima, picking up trash. Everybody uh, has to buy paper bags um, from the local stores, which costs about a dollar for a pack of 10. And you have to put your burnable garbage in these burnable bags, which are picked up and brought to the incinerators here. big industrial machines that process, burn, and sort the ash. So this is the diagram which shows us how it works. Uh, the trucks that we saw going up the back, they park and they dump the garbage into the pit. They have these uh, like UFO catcher claws that come down and get the garbage. That seems crazy. You have been chosen, just like in Toy Story, right? And then they drop it into the chutes, and then the chutes drop it into the incinerator section where it's burnt, and then the energy is caught from the furnaces and turn um, turbines are moved to make energy and then the ash is collected in this part or the next part. And this is where we are in the middle walking through and then this is more ash processing. 
400 tons of waste a day process uh, creates 12,500 kilowatts of energy uh, created by burning the waste. 70% uh, of all trash in Japan, including a lot of plastics, is incinerated. Uh, this has been done in Japan since 1960. But because plastics and uh, most things are included, uh, the ash that's created is toxic. So they can't reuse the ash and the ash goes to landfill. And I really like how they kept the Peace Lane, which comes all the way from central Hiroshima's Peace Park. So they separated the facility into two halves and you have all these big windows in the middle and this big hallway. And even inside the garbage incinerator plant here, they've put trees, living trees inside. So they're trying to really make a point about the urban and natural edge here. <laughs> if you guys saw the movie Drive My Car, the Japanese movie which won some awards this year, uh, it was based in different parts of Japan, but he came here to Hiroshima for the main part where he was doing a play. Oh, we see the garbage truck coming in. See the blue one? There it goes on its way into the incineration plant. There's a white one. Here it goes. So for the movie Drive My Car, uh, they came to this facility. They walked around the outside and they also saw the sixth floor as a part of the film. So if you saw that film, you might have seen it. Uh, so if you go straight, uh, you will hit the Peace Park, Peace Memorial Park. You will see the Gates of Peace, you will see the museum and the cenotaph and the A-bomb dome all within this straight line of peace. Have a look at the design from this side. All metal and glass. Anyway, very unusual tour destination here. <laughs> but thank you guys so much for joining. It's been so fun taking you on this tour. Have a great day and uh, see you next time.